Hi guys, welcome to today's uh, video. I wanted to start off by going over last year's scrapbook. This is last year's scrapbook, 2023. I still haven't found what I wanna put here. I know I wanna put something here. Um, I kinda have an idea, but I need to run it through. Uh, um, kind of my idea is start like I want something like raised and beautiful and then I have like okay this is raised and this is beautiful but anyways long term lot short, lot long story short I haven't done it yet I have plans of maybe writing like a letter to 2023 thanking it and I don't know, kind of like a conversation with 2023 here. That's kind of my idea, maybe put it in an envelope. And then here I haven't done my family picture yet. But uh, you guys remember this is file folders and paper. Uh, just pretty much what I can find and threw it up in here. So sometimes I'll have brown paper and uh, white paper. I feel like this year I might want to do all white because even though it's the same th story, it looks, it feels separate because of the brown. See, like this one's more co coherent, uh, um, what's it called? Story and you could see it. Uh, this is my son. He won a, a contest at the San Diego Aerospace Museum. He, there's his fat chick. I'm so proud of him. Look at him. He's fat check right there. You see him? Um, this is a little plane right there. You see it? Anyways, right there. This is with him with the judges right here. That's him getting it in the mail. San Diego stuff. My baby had twins. Um, museum day. Skating stuff. This is my idea of separating uh, one thought two ideas or how would it be one idea two thoughts yeah one idea two thoughts so she likes to skate so skating related stuff but they're together but you see how i kind of group them separately dogs this year we got a new i almost ran off this dog and we found out he was just thrown out of a moving car and he was homeless and hurt and he looked like he was being hurt and so we brought him home and he became a dog i can't stand but can't live without kind of deal because he's a dork but love him we're in sacramento my princess she's my angel eyes i call her that pictures with the babies school days Grandbaby, isn't he adorable? Look at that. That's my baby, grandbaby number one. My grandbaby and my son. Daddy and son. My son, um, he likes to do the half pipe. His engineer desk room slash bomb making place. <laughs> That's what it seems like. Fourth of July. Birthday girl. What I do because of the scrapbook paper difference. So this is, um, some pages are 14, some are 16. So it doesn't go with, with the 12 by 12. So what I'll do is like, I'll grab scrapbook paper and put it in the back of the pictures. Or like in this case, I'll grab little bits and frame it. I'll do that too. But see, I'll, I'll section it off. So I, this is one sheet and I cut it in half. And now this is here and here. It's still, it still, it brings it the page together actually. Actually, I feel like I'm able to stretch it because I do those kind of things, you know? I'm able to make it longer. I don't know. See, like I'll grab a little piece of paper. See, it's kind of like together, but not really together scenario here 
and then I do the same thing here. This is half of the paper. And then I grab the, the remaining strip and I put it on this side to kind of like put this one together. You see it right there? Sort of like that. The air show, I just got a flyer. Doesn't look like it, but this is kind of like 3D. But because I got flattened so much. Sea World Kids. See, I'll grab a piece of that scrapbook paper and then I'll put some on this side. And then that way I unite these two papers together by doing this. Then the other scrapbook paper, I, I'll cut out the flowers and put them there. See, this is a scrapbook paper. I grab this piece and then I'll grab another piece from other scrapbook paper and I'll put half of that a little bit here and a little bit there. And it now it stretches the... You don't see it, but that's also scrapbook paper. So it's a little bit on top and a little bit on the bottom. And it kind of makes it, you know, like it goes together. I tried it. <laughs> Poor babies were too fat for those pumpkins. More grandbaby stuff. We took. I took my daughter to a violin in concerts. Her name is uh, Lindsay Sterling, if you know who she is you know who she is <laughs> dance giving stuff oh i made my daughter a tea party the little neighbor girls it was super cute uh ai engineering pictures but you see how i i'm able to put the scrapbook paper on some t instances like this one i feel like i'm not i don't need those two inches i don't need those two inches so if you feel like you want to use scrapbook paper at the same time you want to make a different other than 12 by 12 don't be scared look i don't miss those two inches this is uh, probably a 14 and this is 12. so i'll probably have an inch here and an inch here i don't miss those two those, those two inches it frames my paper i don't need more than that but uh look my son gave me for my birthday it says one at uh, one clean car um so it's a pass so anyways this is the 23 i of course have to put the year here oh i know what it is roman numerals for the year dun 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 i think that's what i'm doing because get it ah uh, aha moment thank you guys for helping me arrive there now let's work on the new one okay so let's kick off this um this year's scrapbook build i have these um trees it seems to me that they're like home decorations but um i have no idea but when they I got it at yard sale. They were hanging like rings off it. So it may be one of those things that you hang off jewelry from, like when you take it off in your nightstand or a dress or whatever. In any case, when I saw it, I knew I was going to use them for this exact purpose. Um, I knew I was going to use them to decorate a book um, cover. And I specifically knew I was going to use it to do a scrapbook. Um... I was not, you know, you can envision something as soon as you see it and you can hope it looks like so good as, as you ima imagine it in your head. But in this case, I really love how it came out. I, I was really happy. I took a chance on this. You know, I, I do guys, if you've been here before, like I take chances and I, sometimes they're doozies and sometimes they're not. And, you know, but that's what happens when you try to be creative, when you try to think outside the box. Sometimes you get good stuff. Sometimes, you know, you make crap. So in this case, I really enjoyed this journal. And I hope um, it inspires you to grab something out of the ordinary to create something completely different. In this case, I was um, a tree. It was a metal tree that I took apart. I took each branch. And then um, I split the tree in half because I knew I wanted to do the bottom and the top corner. So once I had it all cut up and layered to how I wanted it to be, then I 
went ahead and designed the inside of how it was going to look. Kind of like I, I wanted it to be more dimensional than just the, these metal pieces on the bottom and on the top. I wanted it to be even more dimensional. So I added depth by designing this like um, layer and then um, and then copied it onto um, a paper so that I can then transfer it onto um, Foamy and then use that Foamy for my layering. Once I had my Foamy prepared, uh, my layer Foamy, I, I felt like some pieces from the tree were sitting um, too high, so it was like making it very awkward stand like pop out in a different way. So I didn't want like things. I didn't want to struggle with this when I was using it. So I wanted to put some of those very high like indentations um, lower. So I decided to carve into the foamy so that it it can um, relieve some of that height of. Like for example, that tree that goes in the set, in like in the in like exact corner of the of the book, it was coming up too much. So I felt like I wanted to, you know, suppress that a little bit. Then I decided it, one for me was not enough. So of course I had to go for a second for me. And once I saw that all that looked good and I like the presentation, then I went ahead and came back with an ice pick. That ice pick allowed me to mark exactly my holes because I'm going to use these holes to to um, thread my thread um, or sew per se I guess that would be the proper term to sew in uh, the supports not no the sewing would be the support right so yeah I'm going to sew in these um, metal pieces of branches into the book so that I don't have to be using glue because I don't want to make it messy. I don't want to use glue because I, um, because of the fabric that I may use for the cover. I feel like glue is not the right thing to do, use on top of or under, but I am going to use some kind of adhesive, just not like silicone glue. And once I have um, my holes transferred onto my for me, then I can. I went ahead and attached everything. I don't know. I, in if I was to redo this again, first attach everything, and then glue it. Cause I don't know why I did this. Like I could have moved every hole available there, but don't do this, people. Don't. Do, this is a tutorial of what not to do. Well, this section. Don't move. Uh, mark your holes and then move it. <laughs> Makes no sense. Anywho. Uh. After I marked my holes, I moved, removed everything and I drilled all the way through to the wood. Because since I was going to use a needle and thread, uh, I cannot use it, needle and thread on wood. So, of course, I had to drill it. I have my dandy book that I'm drilling onto. This book I use just for this purpose, like to drill holes into a poke holes. And so it comes in really handy. Make sure that you see a pattern of sewing coming through. On the back, just check that it makes sense. You know, that's what I, that's how I was making sense. Because at some point I lost track of the holes, but if you look in the back where it's more clear, you're able to see that it makes more sense. This is my spine that I decided for some reason to cut out of cardboard, which made no sense. Um, oh, and this is the fabric. Oh, this is the fabric. It's a dress. Yes, I know, I know, I know. People are gonna struggle. Um, I found it for a dollar. It's uh, the tag said a hundred and twenty nine dollar dress because it's from a uh, what's the store? I don't know, but it was a really nice high end store. And but the problem with this dress, why it probably ended up being at the Swami, it was because it was extra small. Anywho, here's where I fixed my mistake of having a cardboard spine, <laughs> and I. I used the wood, the proper wood spine. Um, it wasn't quite enough of the little um, foamy thing that I had done. It wasn't uh, wide enough. So I filled up the sides of the, of the gaps 
with um, just cardboard, regular cardboard. Okay, so the dress was two part. The velvet part and this like sheer under dress. What happened um, was it so that it wasn't so sheer, I guess. I noticed that if I was going to put the velvet down itself, you're able to see the color of the wood. I don't want that. So I decided to also use the sheer underdress that comes in with the dress. Now, because I don't want to have like the, the glue come through, I'm using this spray adhesive and I'm just using it here at my desk. I know it's like not the right thing to do because I'm going to have all kinds of overspray, but you know, my desk is an art desk, so it's full of overspray of a lot of stuff. So I didn't mind so much, but I did put some cardboard in so that it's not so overwhelming of glue in my desk. <sighs> okay, here's where a lot of mistakes happen. <laughs> I, you will let us later see me fixing it, but um, yeah. Let's just skip ahead to how I fixed it. Okay, so I made a poofy. I took the middle off because I was like, it's not centered quite right. So I took it off. And now it's like hard to put it back on. So I'm gonna take it off again for the quick super time. And then I'm just gonna do it separately. I'm just gonna cut that piece off right here. Cause see how like this thing is, is, is I don't like it because the tag was here and the way I took it off, it unsewed the whole thing. So I'm just gonna cut it here, bring the fabric inside, which maybe I should have done from the beginning. This is the part where I had to tell myself, trust the process because everything was looking like junk. Um, once I separated the whole thing and then recovered it and then wrapped each individual panel I went ahead and started with tape so I know I feel like sometimes when I do this like the tape doesn't allow the like the fabric to adhere to the cover correctly so I found this fab this like tape that has like that is a, a fabric tape, but it feels like it has a little bit of wax on on it. And so I was a little skeptical, skeptical, and um, I was just scared that it wouldn't allow the glue to here, adhere with the fabric. But it worked out great. But just so you know, if you're going to do this, make sure that your tape doesn't have um, like a waxy seal to it. Um, okay, at this point, I was seeing the light, right? I loved how it looked um, once it was, like, layered, you know? Now, if you're wondering why I didn't paint the panels instead of wrapping them, it's a good question. I feel, I thought about it, but then, this is, hear me out. I feel like when you layer texture is always better than when you layer just color. So color and texture is for me better than just color. So I feel like if I would have layered, like let's just say I, I get a matte green paint, right? I feel like still you would, it wouldn't feel the same way and it still wouldn't come across the same way. I don't know. I feel like it had to be the whole nine yards um, I don't know. I, I, maybe I, I should have tried it before I like knocked it off. Um, but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't want to do paint this time. Although I have probably have this in exact color. If you see my, my office, I have every color available. Uh, Plaid sent me, sends me their colors all the time. And so I love using their colors anyway. So, but in this case, I really wanted to stick to the whole dress uh, materials I I use this glue later regret it but not really I really like how it looked it's just that this glue was an old glue so I was really struggling with it because um, 
it was part of a lot of paint and glues that I got at a yard sale, I think. And I feel like it was old, so that's why it was I was like really struggling with it. But it was really easy to use. I really liked the using the tacky glue for this velvet because otherwise, if you use like liquid wood glue, it would come through and it would look like wet spots. So that's why I had to use something else. You could use double sided tape maybe on the edges, but because it's sheer, I really had nothing else to do use other than that. On the edges, on the spine, sorry, I used this like trim that was on the bust of the dress. It was really beautiful and like really like delicate and I don't know, it was really beautiful. I felt it was just the proper thing to use just on the spine. And I think it came out super, super good. Um, for me, it was hard to imagine how I was going to transition like from the cover to the spine to the back cover but it turned out great um the gap that i put in between the two separate um panels is it panels covers it helped me tuck in the back and the and the front the front and the back cover um and the spine cover materials and it worked out great I did the same thing in all the panels, and you guys can see here how I covered the velvet from the front so I don't get it on the back, on the, I don't get the glue on the front of the velvet because I got it on a little sam sampler sheet, um, sampler piece of um, scrap paper, not paper, <laughs> fabric that I had, and it looks really disgusting. It looks like you know, the gel when you put it on hair and then your kid goes outside and plays with it and looks like boogers or something. It looks like that. So I was trying to be really careful not to get it on any of the front or the back cover. Now, I did make sure I get enough glue inside those, those crevices or the trims so that I can um, use my finger or use that little tool to really push it in there. It's It's important because otherwise you miss that whole trim and then it's not done the right way and then you lose your shape and then it all goes to crapola and it all looks trashy. So yeah, very important that you push it in there. Okay. Just push it hard. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Hello. I find this is how I tuck in the, how I cover inside. I am so blessed in that it worked out because I had at this point I had no idea whether it was going to work out or not and I was just going along with the sh punches and tucking one side in and tucking the other side in and I figured like okay if something goes wrong let's see how this goes you know so these are the little steps that sometimes are not in my head until I get there and it worked out great so I guess it was it as long as it's like the same texture and color it, it works out, it, it was just like camouflaging um, itself, and it worked out great. The back was pretty much the same thing, copy and paste, but I make sure that the images, or like, they're not images, they're like kind of like burnout of the fabric. The burnout of the fabric, or the design of the fabric, was mirroring the front of the other, or the other, the front cover so that it looked cute <laughs> okay so once the whole um covering of the of the covers was done i started in um attaching these metal is it tree metal leaves branches uh to my cover i used an embroidery thread and a one of those very hard needles that are like i think for upholstery that's what I used because I remember how I glued the foamy and moved the foamy after I did the holes. So I was trying to put the needle through two foamies. It wasn't hard, hard, but like if I use one of those little like fabric needles, it would have hurt my fingers or I would have just really struggled making it. So what I was doing when I was coming from the front to the back, I would put another needle, like a little small needle, 
and use that as a guide to push it through to the back because I had a guide on the back but not in the front. So I just made me a marker or like a landmark and that's how I was able to put the thread from the front to the back. Once all that nonsense was attached, I grabbed the piece of cardboard. It's not a cardboard, it's a poster board. And it's the same material I'm using for my pages. I grabbed one of those um, cover, I mean, poster papers and covered it with fabric. And I, since I ran out of that tacky spray thing, I just used regular like that stick for the paper and it worked out super good. Super good. Maybe I should have done that in the beginning. I'm just kidding now. Because I don't think it would have worked the same way. But it works the same way. So I don't know how to explain it. So it works the same way as into be the paper becomes tacky. But I don't think I could have just spread it as evenly or as easy on fabric. Like on the green one, I think it would have still stained. I don't know. I should have tried it. But nevertheless, it worked here and I was super happy. I just wrapped it all the way around. Like if I was to do a cover and then use that as my inner cover for the journal. Sorry, not journal, scrapbook. I wanted to uh, make holes for what my binding is going to be. So I'm trying to be more thoughtful as to my processes so that I don't have to like go back and edit stuff or, you know, take apart or break or cut into like the stuff. So this is me thinking ahead. So I'm cutting into the inside of my covers or my cover so that I can use these like um, paper fasteners and so that I can you'll see what I'm gonna do but this is me thinking ahead they did end up looking great and I was so glad that I did that previously and thought about it before anyways for the inside um, papers I decided to go with one color. I know like last year I did different colors, but this year I really wanted to stick to one color, which is white. I have this poster paper that I got on sale from Walmart. They were 49 cents, but then they were on sale for 33 cents. But then there was a clearance on the sale. So I think I got them for like 10 cents. I don't know, but I got like a bunch of them. And this is how I'm going to do it. I weave a cord or a hemp cord in this case is like a binding cord in between the two the top and the bottom of the paper fasteners and that's how I'm creating like little slots where my paper is going to sit I loved this idea I used it on um, one or two more previous journals before and I wanted to use this same idea on my scrapbook I felt like it was versatile and I felt it was easy and I feel it was like kind of classy and elegant. And at the same time, it kind of hides really well on your binding. And it, it makes it look almost like if it was a traditional binding without it being traditional. Because for me, thinking that I'm going to be stuck with my papers and not be able to move them. Like it gives me anxiety or something. I don't know. It's not like I play with them or take them out at all. But not having the option is what kills me. So... I need to have the option of moving things around and this is a great technique and then it also looks like you know sometimes you want to see the binding sometimes you don't and this gives me that flexibility of showing it if I want to or not showing it if I don't want to and I really okay so <clears throat> I grabbed some of this uh, dry clay um air dry clay I wanted to see if I can make a little like trim around here um, because I noticed that the glue is coming off on these areas and I really wanted to show the shape of the curve. Plus, I think it would be a nice, cute little detail. Excuse me, the nail man have been going crazy doing stuff here around the house. Anyway, so I have put something like this. But what I did is I put holes on here. I don't know if you can see it right there. Because I have like tiny little pins that I could put in here. Watch, let me show you. Okay, these are the pins. They're called bank pins. I don't know what it would be, what it means or anything, but I did notice. Look at the size of these. Look at this. 
Sorry about my nails, but. So, I grabbed the needle, and when I was, before this got hard, I um made the hole. So, I'm, my goal is to punch them into that. Right, let me move you. You remember how this is foam? So, I was thinking of doing that to this. Let me see if I can. I gotta put it sideways because I don't remember where the holes are. Let's see. Oh, look, it kind of works. Can you see it? I don't want to pick it up, but I want you to see. You see that? And I feel like once I paint it, I'll just like, I'm able to just stab it on there. Okay, guys, so here it is. There's a little, oh, look, this one came out. No, that's not. There. I love how it looks, okay. So, you see how shiny it is? The little thing I put at the end? Okay, so, you guys know it started with this, right? Uh, it's air dry modeling clay. I got this at Walmart. I let it dry. I painted it black. That worked out great. Um, before it dried, when I did it, I put the the hole for the needle that I, I knew I was gonna be doing. I knew I was gonna be doing these, so I did holes with this. Like I planned ahead because I I think that if I would have um done it after, I would have broken it up. So my idea was to attach it to here without using glue because glue runs on this material and i would have blobs of glue and i don't want to do that but um so i did this and this and then i did this gold and it kind of matched but the texture didn't match so like the shininess of metal didn't match so i said okay let me put um acrylic uh gel the glossy one it didn't work it just I think it kind of changed the color a little bit I didn't like it so I went to where did I put it okay hold on I think I put it away hold on okay so this is what I ended up painting it with if you guys have been here from the beginning I used to use one similar to this for everything like when I was doing um painting these like the soda can tabs these are soda can um, protectors for here, like uh, this part right here. And if I was to do one here, but I also did um, like tabs, like paper tabs. Watch. Uh, where's the paper? I can show you guys. Uh, right? And then you can staple it or just leave it like that, anyways, on a page. But these are all made with soda cans, so to paint them so it doesn't scratch off, these are perfect for that. And this is like, I think this is oil-based, so it doesn't come off at all. I really, really recommend it. It's like expensive, but I got it at a yard sale in a big box of paints, and it was included in there. So I was like, God sent it to me because the other one was running off. So I made these out of that. <clears throat> I use it to paint metal. If you ever do metal craft. This is it for that. Anyway, so I did this journal um, with that. Anyways, and here's a final flip through of it. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad I stuck with all white. Actually, what I want to do is I want to do, since they're kind of relative, relatively, um, close in size i was thinking i'm gonna paint the edges gold like make it look really antique in gold like go all the way you know you see that i could do it now i'm really glad i went down in size because i like to stick out stuff and i noticed that on my other journal and because I don't want to break the illusion of this being Victorian and stuff like that. I don't want like little snippets sticking out. So I'm glad that these papers are smaller. And I also I cut them smaller because uh, I was able to use the whole sheet. If 
I was to use it all the way over here, I would have not been able to use the whole sheet of uh, cardstock. But this is really nice paper. Anyway, so I only used eight sheets out of the ones I got. I got a lot more of these because I got them like really, really cheap. But I'm really glad. Look, it's very sturdy. It's probably the sturdiest pages I've done with all my doohickeys of different kinds of binding. This is very sturdy. Came out looking great. I could always take it off, put it back in, and um, all that in a bag of chips. Loved it, enjoyed it. Um, I love how this turns out. Um, look. I love how it turned out. I loved, loved it. I didn't put the one over here. I still have it, but I don't know. I'm still not 100% convinced about it. You see? I kind of like maybe a little plaque or something. I don't know. But I'm liking it like this so far. Well, thank you guys so much for um, coming to today's uh video i am glad you're here with me today um if you enjoy the content that i try to create for you i try to make good content solid content i want to really go out of my way to do something different for you guys and enjoyable for you guys and i feel like you know it's hard sometimes like it takes time and it's like I, I can't sometimes meet the algorithm of like every week, every week, because it's hard, you know, because I have work and I have mom and I'm with grandma and all these things. And it's like, sometimes it's hard because I want to do a good job and I want to do my best. And sometimes that is time consuming and, you know, it, it hurts the algorithm. But at the end of the day, I feel like you guys are happier with the content. Sometimes it's blobby because some of my ideas are blobby but at the end of the day um i try my best you know i try even if it's blobby it's different you know and i feel like i want to even if the idea or the concept of a book is blobby or what i did is blobby i feel like i want to teach you like a new technique or a new something every day uh no matter what the craft is you know so even if you see a thumbnail and it says it like it looks like dumb i i'm i'm aware that some of the crafts that i do are dumb but i want to teach you a technique i want to teach you something better that i've like messed up a lot of materials to learn and investigate and and teach you know anyways thank you so much for uh coming to this channel if you're interested in this what i just was talking about I do have a video for these. I might link it at the end of this video or down below. But until next time, guys, stay safe, stay crafty. If you appreciate some of the content that I do and you're not subscribed, I would really be uh, grateful if you, if you consider subscribing to this channel. I love you guys. Stay crafty. Stay inspired. Stay... Uh, you know, pushing forward. <laughs> love, love you guys. Till next time. Bye.